Now look, if I know you've got a big ego and I come to you with, let me give you some advice, how's that gonna work out? It ain't gonna work out. It ain't gonna work out. You're gonna say, yeah, go ahead. And I'm gonna tell you my idea, it's gonna bounce off your ego shield, not even making a dent. What was the next one? So I've got this person who's been frustrated because he feels that every time he offers some advice, this other person kind of ignores it, still blames them anyway. So a couple weeks ago, I thought, hey, do you have time for a call? I said, kind of, absolutely. They walked me through this. This person came to them and asked him for advice, and they said, I don't want to give you my advice anymore. You don't listen to me, and even if I offer you something and it doesn't work, you still blame me for the problem. So this person has kind of resigned themselves that this equal I'm not gonna help you. I'm not gonna work through this with you. I'm tired of you asking me and not doing what I say. What should I do in this situation? And that was kind of the scenario is they were tired of having this other person ask them for help. Mm -hmm. So what did you tell him? I told him what he didn't wanna hear. (laughs) Uh, Look, man, this this is a hard thing too. And the reason this one was hard for them and the reason why this is hard for anybody, we can all put ourselves in the position where we don't, we're kind of exhausted by this other person's behavior. The only issue really that's going on here is this person's own frustration, this person's own ego. So the question I ask is, hey, listen, let me make sure I got the situation. They ask you, they ignore your advice, they do what they want, it doesn't work, then they keep coming back to you for advice and you don't wanna help them anymore. And I said, who, who benefits from that? He said, nobody. So okay, how does the team benefit? The team doesn't benefit. So what's the real problem here? And I didn't actually have to tell them what the problem was or explain it. They said, the problem is my own ego. And the reason this person, this this person I'm working with was able to say that is because we've been working with them for months and months and months. And they, like most people do over time, come to the conclusion that in almost every situation where you got a relationship problem, the answer is almost always your own ego. It's almost always you are the, are the problem inside that relationship. And so the question I asked them is, is it, is it potential that maybe the advice that you give this other person isn't that good? So we kind of dissected a little bit of, hey, the two real key things to think about is one is, hey, it may be that the problem isn't with them, the problem is with you. And the other element too is, if you come to the conclusion that you're no longer gonna participate on this team, you're no longer gonna contribute, you're no longer no longer gonna offer what you have, what's the outcome of that? And the outcome is that everybody's gonna lose. And so that, conversation kind of sunk in, which is like, listen, that frustration, that is your problem. You can, how do you get past that? So I'll, I'll go one step further on that. Um, if I'm trying to, let's say I'm trying to give you advice. Yep. And you're not taking the advice. One question I could absolutely ask myself is, you know, if I, if I take ownership of that and say, well, maybe my advice isn't that good. That, that, that could be an outcome, right? The other, and then what do I do about that? I try and formulate better ideas. But the, the other thing is, maybe I'm not doing a good job of communicating my advice to you in a way that you actually want to take my advice. And if I, if I can't communicate something in a way that you want to accept it, then you're not gonna accept it. And, and one of the most rudimentary mistakes that human beings make is giving, when I say, hey Dave, here's a better way to do what you're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey you want, let in fact let's try this Dave let me give you some advice now look if I know you've got a big ego and I come to you with let me give you some advice how's that gonna work out it ain't gonna work out it ain't gonna work out you're gonna say yeah go ahead and I'm gonna tell you my idea it's gonna bounce off your ego shield like <laughs> with 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 no not even making a dent yeah. it's not even gonna make a dent. So maybe, and when we start pulling the strings on this, and, and this is, it's one of those things where sometimes you almost feel like it's a, it's a cop out to get to the point in the conversation where you say, you start pulling the string, pull the string, pull the string, and you get to a point where you go, oh, you don't have a good, uh, I don't have a good enough relationship with you. Because if I had a good enough relationship with you and I gave you advice, you'd be like, oh, I didn't see it that way. And if I don't have that strong enough relationship with you, what I need to do is actually be more tactful and maybe say, hey Dave, can you explain to me why you're executing it like that so I can understand it better? You say, well, you know, we're doing it this way because it's the most efficient way. Oh, uh, hey, the, the way you're doing this one part over here, the cycle over here, 
does that always does that always work the fastest? And you go, yeah, it's always the best way. Oh, that's awesome. Have you ever seen anyone do it this other way? I was wondering what your opinion was of that. And all I'm doing is just opening up your mind, trying to have a conversation. I'm actually, now instead of me giving you my opinion, I've actually flipped the deck over. Now I'm asking you for your opinion. I'm asking you for your opinion, which means that I'm elevating your opinion because I'm asking, I'm not giving you mine. When I give you my opinion, I'm elevating my own opinion. I'm gonna elevate your opinion. So I say, what do you think about that little part of the project over here, this little cycle? Do you think that's the best way? What's your opinion on that? And you say, well, you know, I have seen it done better. Oh, and all of a sudden we're having a real conversation about it. Similar vein, I had a I had an individual on a on a on a call with a company and and the guy props the guy says, "Hey, what do I do when my spouse won't take ownership?" You know, and it's just and I had to go through the whole thing. Listen, you know, um this isn't about your spouse. <laughs> this is about you. And if if you're looking at your spouse when your spouse doesn't execute the thing you way you wanted it to, it's actually on you. And I go, I always go back to Charlie Plum. To Charlie Plum. If you haven't heard that podcast, it's number 76. And they in the in the Hanoi Hilton after you was shot down and was a prisoner of war for six years. And when they had cellmates, if their cellmate was doing something that annoyed them, if if Dave was doing something as my cellmate that annoyed me, it was my fault. It was my fault. And if that's where it's if that's step number one for you, you're gonna get a lot further in all your relationships. Instead of thinking when Dave does something that annoys me, that's my fault. Instead, it's Dave does something that annoys me. And it's my fault for allowing it to annoy me. And I need to adjust. Start there. It's a good place to start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the beauty of that too is is whatever level, whatever way you look at this, at however you want to pull that thread of that problem and get to the core of it, every direction you look at it, every way you attack it, it always comes back to you, which is actually a really good thing because that means you have all the control over the situation. And if the first approach didn't work, cool, no factor. Take another approach. The other reason why I really wanted to talk about this one this is a company we've got a long-standing relationship with. We've been with them for well over a year. We, we know these people really well. And this is one of those conversations that I get to have that's kind of fun is that in the middle of the conversation, I can see the other person dialing like they know what's going on. Mm-hmm. And when we were talking, and I was, I was talking about the idea of, hey, listen, when you resign yourself, to, hey, I'm not going to do this anymore. As I'm going to get to an explanation, this person cuts me off and says, that's not cover and move. <laughs> And that right there's like, hey, we're done. That's that, you got it. That's exactly right. And so, when you're working with other people and you see them make the connection, it makes that ownership piece so much easier when they can, in their own mind, say, oh, hey, what I'm not doing is this, and that's hurting me and it's hurting the team. I can easily go fix that. It makes those other pieces so much easier to apply. It's easier to keep your ego in check when you can act when you can actually connect it to the things that we teach. And this was one where they said, that's not cover move. I got it. That's good to go. Check. All right. So build good relationships. And by the way, it's on you. Yeah. Well, let's do, let's do one more. Do one more? Yeah. It seems uncomfortable because now you're blaming me. And when you blame me, I get defensive. And now I go on the attack. 